We all feel like giving up sometimes. We all go through times where we feel like God is one million miles away. But we don't have any idea what He's doing when we're tired, when we're weary, when we think we just can't go on. Most people are afraid to set great dreams and set big goals because of the fear of failure. There's something much worse than failure. It is the fear of failure. I want to remind you that failure is not final, it's formative. It is part of the process. It's part of the journey. Your failure matters as much as your success. How do you think you're going to grow if you don't ever fail? Yet some of you have failed and you have decided, well, guess what? I'm a failure. No, failure is an event. It is never a person. I need you to make up in your mind that the only way you can lose is if you quit. I just need you to keep going. First, you cannot give up. When you enter into your long season, you've got to give it all you've got. When people go into a season of struggle, the first thing that they want to do is take a sabbatical. But whenever trouble comes, the only way that you can get through trouble is work your way through it. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Don't confuse movement with progress. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up there. Develop your own compass and trust it. Take risks, dare to fail. Remember the first person through the wall always gets hurt. You're going to fall down, but the world doesn't care how many times you fall down as long as it's one fewer than the number of times you get back up. If you want to grow up, you want to be mature, there is no way to do it without pain. You can't grow up on easy street. And the very thing that discourages you is the very thing that develops you. Make one room in your house as beautiful as possible. That's, that's what I'm writing about now. Um, I, I talked a lot about already about the necessity of cleaning your room, which is, you know, a, in some sense a foolish piece of advice because it seems so obvious, but it's not obvious at all. And you'll find if you try it, especially if you're in a household that's not very functional, that you'll encounter obstacles that you couldn't imagine existed while you're trying to put your life in order. And you can take your surroundings beyond order and, and, and move towards beauty, and that's unbelievably useful because while beauty calls people to their higher being, I would say, and to make friends with beauty is to introduce yourself, and introduce yourself very carefully to one of the mysteries of life that make it worth living. Now, we teach things that are generally not taught in school, as I already have said, but I want to talk about another little factor. 90% of the visits to medical doctors are directly or indirectly related to stress. 90%. My stress level, and I face as many deadlines as anybody you know. It's always a book production, a class I'm teaching, a seminar I'm presenting, and each one of them uh, requires time and concentration. Example, how many of you feel like I've made this talk before? Can I see your hand, please? Several hundred times I made it yesterday. You know what I did between yesterday and today? I spent over six hours getting ready for today. You see, I think it would be arrogant if I thought I could stand up and spit it out just because I did it yesterday or hundreds of times. 
That's arrogance. When you respond to life instead of react to it, react is negative. You get sick, go to the doctor, she gives you a prescription, says, see me tomorrow. You walk in the next day, she said, "Uh uh-oh, it's not working. Uh, We got to change their prescription. You get a little nervous. But as she smiled and said, hey, it's working. And so you have just, she's just responded and you feel better because now you see some real hope in order to get ahead in life. Make friends with people who want the best for you. And that's a meditation on my own childhood and adolescence to some degree. I I had friends who wanted the best for me and friends who didn't. And, you know, they were friends who... Some of them were aiming up and some of them were aiming down. And if you have a friend that's aiming down and you do something that's aiming up, then they're generally not that happy about it. You know, they try to top your accomplishment with one of their own hypothetical or real or put down what you're doing or offer you a cigarette if you're trying to quit and you've kind of done that successfully or a drink if you've been drinking too much and are just trying to stop being an alcoholic, you know, or, or yeah, they're cynical and bitter and and devoted towards no good. And sometimes that's family members too. And sometimes it's even part of you, you know. But this chapter is a injunction to people. is like, like you have an ethical responsibility to take care of yourself, you have an ethical responsibility to surround yourself with people who have the courage and, and faith and wisdom to wish you well when you've done something good and to stop you when you're doing something destructive. And if your friends aren't like that, then they're not your friends. And maintaining your friendships with them might not even be in their interest. And so it's a tricky argument to make because I'm not saying, you know, whenever anyone's in trouble, you should, you know, push them into a ditch and then give them a couple of kicks. That's that's not the idea. The idea is that, but I had a couple of rules I didn't write about. One was be careful, uh, be careful about whom you share good news with. And another was be careful about whom you share bad news with and everyone those rules ring in people's minds quite quickly. A friend is someone you can share good news with, you know. You go to them and you say, hey, look, this good thing happened to me. And, and they say, look, I'm so happy that that happened to you. Like, way to be. And they don't think, God damn it, why didn't that happen to me? And like, you know, you didn't deserve it. Here's a bunch of reasons you're stupid and why it won't work. It's like, that's not helpful. And so I would say, like, if people are, you know, what the other thing people are doing, if they're trying to drag you down, let's say, is they're trying to see if you'll put up with it. Because they have this idea that maybe life isn't worth living and things aren't good. And that if they can besmirch, let's say, to use an archaic term, something that's pristine and good, then they demonstrate to themselves that there is no true ideal and that there's no necessary reason to be responsible and to strive forward. And so they use you as a test case. You know, I'll just push you down into the low lobster bin and see how you respond. And if you put up with it, then yeah, my cynicism is fully justified. If you take people and you expose them voluntarily to things that they are avoiding and are afraid of, you know, that they know they need to overcome in order to meet their goals, their self-defined goals. If you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of, they get stronger. And you don't know what the upper limits to that are, because you might ask yourself, like, if for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, by your own definitions, right, within the value structure that you've created to the degree that you've done that, what would you be like? 